Horn Masturbation Orgasm Classifications To better understand what it is we are up against, I think it important to start with a thorough breakdown of where we are. To help with this, I have attempted to make a classification system in which we can find our footing. The classes briefly are as follows. 1. Chronic Fapper One who denies their addiction and enjoys their slavery, seeing no harm in the vice. 2. Relapser One who recognizes their addiction and is stuck between beginning to overcome it and falling back into it. 3. Beginner One who has overcome the initial hurdles of relapse and begun to practice control over their minds and bodies. 4. Overcomer One who has overcome the addiction and attained mastery over their minds and bodies. These four classes will be further broken down as we continue, but here we have the foundation of a vocabulary that we can use to build on. I will briefly explain my reasoning for adopting this method for addressing the problem of PMO. Being a child of the digital age, I look back at my early years and can call on a plethora of motifs and systems of organization in which I was immersed by virtue of my affection for computers and computer gaming. From the various operating systems and software programs I've had to learn and relearn over the years, to the various video game consoles, from Pokemon to Morrowind, from Deus Ex to Age of Empires, strategy and resource management, user interface layout and character creation, story writing and world building, all of these have played an instrumental role in helping me over the years visualize and organize my thoughts in ways that have allowed me to do tasks that in the beginning seemed daunting. Like all good games, the challenge lies in figuring out ways to manage accomplishing something grand with something small. Another way of putting it is to think of it like the beginning of a generic role-playing game. Your character will be level 0 or level 1, depending on the developer's choice. Either way you cut it, the journey always starts at the bottom. From there the game unfolds and begins to teach you through trial and error. Well, the good games used to do this, though I am aware that most modern games now hold your hand, and as such aren't really games so much as interactive movies and propaganda. But that's neither here nor there. Returning to my point, a good game teaches you through allowing you to fail, experiment, and most importantly, play. Learn the rules and employ the strategies for winning and you level up. Upon leveling up, you acquire new skills, new gear, new upgrades, and likewise, new challenges are increased in the next section. This continues until you top out at whatever level the developer decides and usually coincides with the end of the journey and conclusion of the story. This formula translates quite well into real life, albeit with a little bit of imagination and work on our part. My endeavor here is to try to make it easier for those struggling with overcoming their addiction to do so by analyzing the problem with a gamer's mindset. Approach the issue as you would a quest, likely to be your primary quest at the moment. And like any good quest worth doing, this one will have an immense amount of loot in the end, as it promises self-mastery which is the first and most important key to all other loot boxes in the world. Enough has been said about my reasoning. I hope you now have a more concise understanding of my methodology going forward. Part 1 Strategies for Overcoming and Leveling Up Classifications in Depth Level 1. Chronic Fapper Descriptors Lethargic towards constructive ends, abnormally fatigued, hypersexualized, embraces degenerate, destructive, and self-destructive behavior and culture, placid, weak, and effeminate, intellectually stifled by lusts, and spiritually debased and unhealthy aversions to spiritual teachings that depart from excusing their slavery. Lacking self-control, prone to swings in emotion. Stage 1 of 
Level 1 Recognition Before one can overcome being a chronic fapper, one must first recognize their situation. The question, what is the good that comes from constantly wasting one's semen and energy in simulated sex with digital images, must first be answered, and that answer be understood. The only correct answer to the aforementioned question is, there is no good that comes from it. The next question is to ask, who is providing it for free, and for what reason? Now, the answer to this can be found by looking at who owns the means of production and distribution, and how their business model actually operates, but we will belay that investigation for the time being, as it will encompass an entire series of its own. However, once these questions are asked, and the answers are understood, then progress can be made to the next stage. Stage 2 of Level 1 Progress after one has recognized and understood that chronic fapping is self-destructive and at best a waste of vital time and energy, then progress can begin in full. The next step is to begin to clean one's body, both externally as well as internally, of the debris picked up from living a life immersed in a sea of filth. To begin, fasting and exercise are woven into one's schedule and maintained for 30 days or 3 weeks. Fasting here refers to both the mental as well as the material food we consume. One should eat only once a day, one meal, modest in size and flavor, nothing too savory or too sweet. One should drink only distilled water or water that has been purified of all contaminants. Before and after every meal and drink, give thanks, verbally, directed to the meal and drink, and to the provider of the meal, including yourself if you are the one who prepared it, and to God. Exercise daily means here to exert your body for at least one hour a day in physical high-intensity exercise. This can range from a great deal many exercises, but a baseline minimum for a man in the year 2023 could be as follows. Take your age as a base range for the number of reps you will do in any given exercise set, and then do three sets of it. So, for example, if you are 21 years old and you are doing push-ups, you should be able to do three sets of 21 push-ups without issue. You should strive to make this second nature and remain present in mind so as not to forget to be at all times in a grateful spirit. Remove from your schedule those things that are gateways to cooming. This includes those private smartphone and laptop visits. If your device is instrumental to your business, then make it an instrument of your business alone. Disable your access to the smog of lusts by blocking their access to your router and each device and erect as many obstacles as are available to you between you and the source of the smog. Make it a chore to be tempted during these three weeks. It is important that I stress here that you must separate yourself for the time allotted from the gateways of temptation, or else you will be adding to your load unnecessarily and increasing the odds that you will remain stunted in this class. Upon completion of this stage, when all the above requirements have been satisfied, the next class can begin. Level 2. Relapser descriptors aggravated abnormally fatigued over sexualized and prone to temptations tends toward degenerate destructive and self-destructive behavior and culture intellectually stifled by lusts stockholm syndrome tendency to attack self while engaged in spiritual warfare seeking for a way out of the smog of lust tendency to ignore or refuse to cultivate their mind space towards overcoming Stage 1 of Level 2 Recognition Much like the previous class, overcoming relapse begins with the recognition stage. The reason for this is largely the same as well. Until one recognizes they are a relapser, one simply cannot progress. This can be sussed out with answering some of the following questions. Am I finding my way over the obstacles I place between myself and the smog, 
or did I not even erect any obstacles? What is it that I get from working so hard to assist my adversary? Is temporary pleasure greater than self-mastery? The answers to these questions are like the answers to the ones in the previous class. They are in the negative. That is to say that you know that either you did not erect any obstacles, or that you worked diligently to subvert yourself at the behests of an enemy for absolutely nothing save a fleeting moment of illusory ecstasy. When one recognizes that they are working against themselves, and that they are attacking themselves by subjecting themselves to the smog and returning to the vomit that was PMO, they can begin to progress and level up. Stage 2 of Level 2 Progress Now that you recognize how you got here, you can pick yourself up and begin the work of climbing out. The relapser is prone to self-flagellation, and in some cases can have present and unhealthy levels of self-hate due to the scars and damage inflicted on themselves by virtue of what they either have consumed through the gateways of their soul or what they have wrecked on their bodies. Easy it is, they find it, to slip into the adversary's camp and resupply them with ammunition and energy, all the while waking from the smog later and railing not against the enemy but against themselves for having just before outfitted and armed them to better assault their position. These habits are indulged in only to the degree that the relapser continues to ignore his mind state. The moment one becomes present in their mind and begins to cultivate that presence, this is the beginning of progress. After becoming present in mind, realizing the struggle from a top-down view, if you would, taking note of their position, taking note of the enemy's position, taking note of their resources and the enemy's, their supply lines and the enemies, their weak spots and the enemies. Then work can begin. First and foremost, you must cease and desist in aiding and abetting the enemy. By this we mean that you are no longer permitted to attack yourself when you have fallen or stumbled along the way. Spending time thinking deeply about the relapse should only be done in repose, that is, with a peaceful mind and then only so long as it takes you to discover what caused you to stumble in the first place. When you trip over a stone that you did not see, or in this case, actively ignore, do you stand up, turn about, and begin to shout at the stone? Now how much more foolish does it look then to stand up and begin to thrash yourself? Recognize the trips, traps, slips, and falls that have been laid before us. Do not ignore those that you see and when you do fall into one that you did not. Begin the process of getting out by keeping your wits about you, by having your mind space be clear and devoid of all passion while you evaluate. If you fall into a trap you did not see and cannot find a way out, then you must speak out, for your voice will carry itself further and there are hands willing to help if they know where to reach. Level 3. Beginner. Descriptors. Encouraged. Vigilant. Normal or baseline energy reserves. Tends toward self-constructive and creative behaviors and culture. Occasionally harangued by lusts, but practicing cultivating their mind space towards overcoming them. Recognizes the struggle they're engaged in and refuses to attack themselves on behalf of the adversary firmly entrenched in their own camp, spits in the face of the enemy and begins to recognize their assaults more readily. Stage 1 of Level 3 Vigilance It is in the beginner class where we first begin to resemble more closely the person we are becoming and meant to be. Up until this class, one is a facsimile or a facade of a person whom they erroneously associated with themselves and thus acted on. The beginner starts to recognize more easily the traps and falls laid out for them and more importantly they refuse to ignore them, actively erecting obstacles to drive them away from them or closing up the falls so as to no longer have to deal with them. This requires vigilance on the part of the beginner. 
As each day that goes by, the adversary is constantly devising new traps and digging new pitfalls for us to fall into along the way. Recognizing this, and understanding the lessons learned from the previous two classes, the beginner cultivates their mind space to constantly encourage their efforts and victories, as well as maintain their physical space in proper alignment to the lessons that they've learned. State 2 of Level 3 Maintenance. This stage puts all of the understandings one has taken from the previous two classes into use, and its purpose is to ingrain further the habits that have been developed in lieu of the self-destructive behaviors one was subjecting themselves to at the outset of this journey. It is in this stage that we hone them into a second nature by remaining consistent. Consistency, like most things that can be understood by the human mind, can be attained through regular practice, and it is mandatory that one internalize it before progress to the final class can be attained. Doubt that one can remain consistent in these endeavors can be addressed by realizing that you were consistently abusing yourself prior to setting out along this path, and if you can consistently do something bad to yourself, and even unconsciously so, then you can likewise train your mind to do those things which are good for you consistently. It is only a matter of applying the lessons learned on a regular basis. Once a day becomes twice a day, becomes four times a day, becomes hourly, becomes half hourly, becomes constant. Work to maintain presence of mind constantly and vigilance will become second nature. Having a vigilant second nature will make remaining consistent possible. Question often, where am I right now in my mind and where am I going? If you do not have an answer to where you are going, and you cannot answer where you are or how you got there, you have not been present and you should pause and chart your course more clearly. Make your destinations places that will empower you and take you higher. Remember always that at this stage you are still climbing and the adversary will still be attacking you. Be careful not to regress a level, and more careful still not to remain there if you do. As you climb, you may lose your footing. However, each time you slip, you must remember your lessons, and your ascent will be that much easier, having the knowledge gained from the experience. Each time you discover a new trap or pit, you must be diligent in identifying them and avoiding or destroying them where possible. Do not leave your gates unbarred and unguarded. Level 4 Over Coomer Descriptors Repose Confident Has wrestled control over his mind and body from the adversary. Lives in a near constant mind space cultivated to empower themselves and others. Recognizes when their mind space is under assault laughs in the face of temptation, and mocks the adversary's attacks, assists fallen brothers by lifting them up and reminding them who they aren't, develops means to help prevent others from falling. Stage 1, Level 4 Repose Upon reaching the fourth and final class in our system, you have arrived at the stage of repose. By this we mean you have cultivated a mind and body space that rests in confidence of its mastery. No more are there doubts as to who controls what. The mind and body are united under the sovereign control of the individual, the soul of the person, in other words. Mastering the previous classes means that you have developed a constant state of presence in your mind so that no passion grabs hold of your mind without your hand first taking hold of its bridle for there are times where passion is called for, but no longer at the behests of your body or flesh or the adversary. When assaulted or tempted, your repose is undisturbed, and you remove yourself from their influence, or remove their influence from your space. Having knowledge of yourself and the enemy, you are able to see through their attacks and tactics never offering them any assistance to injure you. This becomes so second nature that you begin to exude it, offering a living example to those around you 
and driving those in the enemy camp away from you by your very presence and those in your camp to your side. Stage 2 of Level 4 Test The Overcomer, though having attained the stage of repose and having mastered themselves, has yet another test to overcome. There is a tendency among men to, upon having overcome some great obstacle, to seek yet still a greater obstacle to overcome, and thus the temptation to return to the disgusting filth of the smog that caught them unawares in their earlier stages arises. Take care to pass this test, Overcoomer, because here can mean the difference between continued leveling and reset to level one. It is simultaneously the easiest and most subtle of traps to overcome. A question to ask when the thought arises would be something like, how would subjecting myself to the stink of those illusions be in any way a greater test than what I have already accomplished? Or, what kind of progress would it be to throw away the peace of mind I have cultivated to test myself against an enemy I have already beaten? You already have the title belt here. You are now master of yourself. The next steps are yours to decide. And know this well and well enough, that the beginning of true life starts with knowing thyself. And to know thyself, thou must master thyself. For he who is not master of a subject does not truly know it, and he who does not truly know a subject is no master of it.